Hello there, and we're ready to move on to part 2. And before we do that, I'll hit the A key to deselect all and hit B. And select all these objects here. And I'll hit the M key to move them to layer 2. Now I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch to top off of you. And I'll hit Shift A to add mesh a plane. Now I'll hit Tab to switch from Object to Edit Mode and hit the S key to scale and the Y to constrain scaling on the Y axis. And I'll scale my plane just like that. And I'll now hit Ctrl R for loop cut. You can see it here and I'll move it to the side at about here. And I'll now hit Control Tab for the Mesh Select mode and select Face. I'll right click this face to select it. And I'll hit the E key to extrude. Right mouse button to cancel any movement for my extruded face. And I'll hit the S key to scale it down just a bit. And I'll hit Delete and select Delete Faces. Now I'll do the same thing for this one here for the big part. I'll hit the E key to extrude, right mouse button and then hit the S key to scale down at about here and also hit the S to scale and X to constrain scaling on the X axis and I'll scale it at about here. Now again I'll hit the delete key to erase the face. Now you see what we got here. I'll also hit Ctrl R over here to create a loop cut and Ctrl R again over here to create another loop cut. And I'll now hit Ctrl Tab for the mesh select mode and I'll click vertex. Now I'll select this vertex right here, hit Z and X to move it on the X axis, move it at about here, and select this one as well. G and X to move it on the X axis at about here. OK, now Tab key to switch back to object mode and you see what we got. And I'll now hit Shift A to add mesh plane. Now I'll hit the S key to scale down my plane. Zoom in and scale it down a bit more at about here. And I'll also hit the S key and Y to scale it on the Y axis just a bit. And I'll now hit the G key to grab it. And let's move it at about here. OK. And of course we can add the white material to our object. Set it to white, select this one. And click here and assign the white material here as well. Now we got this plane right here and I'm moving to the modifiers panel here and I'll add an array modifier and I'll deselect the relative offset and select the constant offset and I'll set the X to 5 or perhaps 10 and I'll just increase the count now. Okay. Now shift D to duplicate this array here and Y to move it on the Y axis and move it down. OK. And I'll, cre I'll create another duplicate, shift D again and Y to move it on the Y axis. And now I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode. And I'm doing this on the edit mode just. Uh, in order not to mess with my array here and I'll hit the S key and X to scale it on the X axis and again S and Y to scale it on the Y axis at about here. Now I'll hit Tab to switch back to object mode and hit 0 on my camera perspective view to move to my camera perspective view and I'll render an image just to see how it looks and you can see what we got here. I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view and hit Shift A to add text. 
Now you can see my text object. I'll hit the tab key to change the text. Let's hit N, A, and tab key again. And I'm moving to the text options here. I'll first of all center my text and then I'm going to hit the S key to scale it down at about here. I'll hit the G key to grab it. Let's place it here and S key to scale again. Okay. And G and Y to move it on the Y axis at about here. And I'll also bring the offset value down to negative to some negative values here just to create a thinner version for my text here. And I'll also add the white material to it. Okay. Now shift D, duplicate my text and move it on the Y axis at about here. And I'll change the size to 0 0.1. And again, set the offset back to 0. Move it on the Y axis a bit more at about here. And hit the tab key and let's write something down okay now tab key again to switch back to object mode and we're just writing something down here and I think it looks nice let's hit F12 to render an image and you can see how it looks now escape and time for the interesting part I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch the front excuse me to top, to top all of you and I'll hit shift A to add messy cube I'll scale down my cube hit the S key to scale it down and zoom in and scale it down again. Hit the S key and scale it down. Okay. Let's move it to the side a bit. I'll hit T and X to move it on the X axis. And I'll now hit the Tab key to switch to Edit Mode. And hit S and X to scale it on the X axis. At about here. Now you can see our cube here. I'll hit Ctrl R to create a loop cut and then scroll my mouse wheel to create lots of loop cuts for my cube here. And I've set the number of cuts to 45. You can see it on the top uh, on the bottom left corner here. And left mouse button to confirm the loop cuts. And I'll also add the white material to my cube here. And We'll move to the modifiers panel for my for our cube here and hit the tab key to go back to object mode and I'm going to add a displace modifier. Okay, we'll need a texture for our displace modifier, so I'm moving to the material here and then at the texture and click new for a new texture. I'll change the name of the texture to displace. And I'll also unselect this one here, and thus making sure that the uh, that this texture here is only going to be used by the displays modifier. Now I'll increase the size. Let's set it to 0 0.4 for the clouds uh, texture here, and I'll move back to the modifiers panel and over to the displays modifier here, and change the texture to displays. Now I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch the top off of you. And I'll increase the strength for the displace modifier. I'll increase it. Let's set it up to, let's say, 25. I think it's good at about there. And I'll also hit Shift A to add an empty. And as you can imagine, 
the MT will control the displace modifier and allow us to add some animation to our cube here. Now right clicking the displaced cube to select it and I'll change the texture coordinates, click here from local to object and at the object select the empty. Now 7 again on the numeric keypad to switch to top of view and you can see what we get. Now I'll also click smooth for shading for the cube right here or perhaps a little bit flat. Okay. Now uh, in order to animate the displacement for the cube I'm right clicking the empty to select it. I'll hit 7 on my main keypad to switch to, to top of the view and hit the I key to insert a location keyframe this time around and I'm inserting a location keyframe for, for my empty here. Okay. And I'm moving to the end frame to frame 300 and I'll hit the T key to grab the empty and move it on the Y axis and move it up at about here and hit the I key to insert a new location keyframe. Now I'll hit 0 on my remote keypad to switch to camera perspective view and let's move back to frame 1 and see how it looks and as you can see we have the displacement creating some nice little effect here for uh, our displaced cube and as the empty moves you can see how the displace behaves. So I think we got our second little part here ready. We can of course select our objects here and hold down the shift key like we did before to set parent to object and select the text here, hold down the shift key select the frame and hit Control p and set parent to object select the tiny text here and hold down the shift key and Control p to set parent to object and let's move to the arrays here right click the middle array here to select it and hold down the shift key select this one Control p set parent to object let's select this one and the frame Control p set parent to object and this one, this array right here and hold down the shift key to select the frame and control P to send parent to object. Okay now I'm right clicking the frame to select it and now you can see that if I hit the G key to grab it and the X to move it on the X axis you can see that I can easily move it around and the funny thing about it is that since we change our position, uh, uh, since we change our position in relation to the empty here, we got the uh, displacement here working, and you can see it. I'll grab it on the y-axis, and you see how it moves again. But we've grouped them all here just to be able to position the object. We don't care about the empty now. The empty is going to move for the uh, animation duration so it's all nice so this is it we got our second part ready and I'm going to save this one again file save as and stylish display 2 now that we have the second part complete and again moving on and see you all at the third part